So I am just taking video of uh, the Mercury transit through my telescope. This would be camera to eyepiece because my imager is not wanting to detect the subtle details of uh, Mercury's disk right now. Uh, I normally would be using a Celestron next image, but uh, like I said, it's the disk of Mercury's too subtle to be picked up. So uh, I'm holding a decent DSLR up to the eyepiece and just uh, manually taking this uh, video. And as you can see there, that would be Mercury, the disk in view, and right below it would be a cluster of sunspots. A decent sized cluster actually, but the, you'll notice the biggest difference uh, in differentiating uh, Mercury from the sunspots is Mercury is actually a disk. So. It's fairly cool seeing it actually through the eyepiece. It's kind of shaky uh, holding the camera up, but uh, like I said, this is the best I can do at the moment. Uh, the imager isn't quite detecting the subtle disc. But uh, we're waiting for about four years for this. Um, I was clouded out uh, for the Venus transit four years ago. Uh, I had all my, all my equipment ready for the event and uh, was clouded out the entire day. I might have maybe got one view, if that. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, the Venus transit uh, only happens twice a century, whereas the Mercury transit happens a dozen times a century. In fact, the next one will be in 2019. The last one was in 2006. So I have more chances in my lifetime to see this, so it's not as big of a deal. All right, so here is where the camera cut off. Uh, the battery died and I had to go inside and basically looked at all the imagery and photographs I had taken. Um, so as I'm speaking, I'm gonna be showing images that I got from the, uh, from the Mercury Transit viewing. Um, so I got a few decent ones. Basically everything I took was by taking my camera and holding it up to the eyepiece. Uh, I didn't have a mount. Uh, I'm not sure what the exact term for it is. There's a certain, it's something ring. There's a something, ter there's a certain term for uh, the uh, piece you can get to attach your camera to um, where your eyepiece would go. I do not have that. So the reason I had to use my actual camera, which is a uh, DSLR, uh, be a Nikon uh, DS. 3300 I believe is what it is. Uh, I had to hold that up to the actual eyepiece is because I have a Celestron next image uh, solar system imager that I got back in like 2010 um, and it normally does a decent job. Uh, you basically just fit it in where the eyepiece would go and it takes uh, imagery and video um, but it wasn't able to detect the subtlety of uh, mercury going across uh, the sun. Uh, I feel like it would have worked for the uh, Venus transit but it it was uh, Mercury was too small for it to be able to be detected by the Celestron imager. Um, that's just the way it is. Uh, I've detected sunspots with it, but for some reason it just wasn't detecting uh, Mercury through it. Not sure why. I actually like the shots I got better from my camera, to be honest, than what I would have gotten through the Celestron imager. So I feel like I might try to upgrade in the future. I'm not sure. Um, to some type of ring to hold my camera to uh, the eyepiece. Uh, I'm not sure 100% how that would work, but I know people who do it. So I might think about doing that because my camera is really good and my telescope's decent. It's decent sized. It's not a it's not a tracking telescope, but I feel like I could do a decent uh, planet, moon, and sun photography with it. And possibly even maybe Andromeda and uh, the Orion uh, Nebula as well as maybe Pleiades. So basically the larger deep space objects you might be able to get like small time-lapse uh, imagery of them. Uh, but it mostly, Dobsonia, because it's a Dobsonia, it'd mostly be for uh, planetary moon and sun uh, photography because those are a lot, a lot closer and easier to photograph. Anything deep space related you pretty much need something to track it so that you can get enough information from it so that you can stack and you know get a decent image from it 
Uh, but like I said, there's a potential where you could get maybe Andromeda or uh, Orion Nebula or Pleiades, something like that, through a telescope like this. But, uh, you know, it's pretty good. Um, so I had uh, been meaning to watch the Venus Transit four years ago, uh, but I was clouded out, which is what I had all these uh, supplies for. I had two solar filters, one for my larger telescope and one for my smaller one. The larger one I had to build myself because there was essentially no 10-inch uh, um, solar filters around because I was purchasing late game because I didn't have the money until late game. Um, so, because uh, I'm a painter as well and I sold a painting and it basically paid for all my materials that I uh, that I got for my telescopes for that uh, for that specific viewing. And when I went to go purchase, I was able to find smaller, uh, ready-made, uh, solar filters, um, and not, like, really high quality, like, glass or, uh, you know, nothing like that, just solar film, like, something to, uh, just, like, kind of like a flimsy film around, like, a plastic, uh, outer ring, which I found for my Midi TX-80, uh, so I got that, and I got that and the uh, larger uh, film for my uh, Dobsonian 10 inch just to make sure that I had two, so if one didn't arrive on time, I'd have the other one. So I got both of those. Uh, plus, I was initially going to be, because this is back, I had only been out of high school for a few years at this point, so I was going to be going and viewing with a few of my high school science teachers, as well as a group of my friends. We were all going to go view it. And my family was going to be there as well. Uh, so it was going to be a big event. Didn't go down as planned. It was cloudy all day. I maybe got one or two views of the sun. I don't think I saw uh, the Venus transit at all, to be honest. Uh, and it's a shame. It only happens twice every hundred years. And the first time it happened this century uh, was back in 2004, I believe. Something like that. So that's pretty much out of the... You know, it's out of the loop now. That's not going to happen again in our lifetime or our lifetimes. Uh, so, but the Mercury transit happens a little bit more frequently. I believe the next one's 2019. So it happens like a few times. Then it, like you wait like 20 or 30 years or something, and it happens a few more times. Something like that. Um, it's a little bit more irregular than uh, than the Venus transits, but it's more frequent. Uh, so that's pretty much it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. I feel like I got a lot better imagery and video that I've that I would have gotten with my Celestron next image, anyways. Uh, even through uh, Registax and stuff like that. I feel like the ultimate, uh, the best views I could get would be to use uh, my camera mounted to my eyepiece and then processed through Registax. Obviously, if I had a tracking telescope on top of that, it would make it even better. And then you're talking about professional magazine quality type imagery. But I feel like it's a decent enough shot for, uh, especially considering uh, that it's mostly, a, it's just, it's pretty much just a hobby of mine. It's something I'm interested in recreationally. Um, so let me know what you guys think. I remember telling, I, I remember doing a video like a report back four years ago, you know, basically saying that I didn't get to see the Venus transit through my own telescope. I did watch a live stream, uh, and that I was basically just looking forward to the Mercury transit in four years, which I thought was such a big amount of time, but here it is now past and over with. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video and the photos and, uh, hopefully you guys had clear skies as well. Take it easy.